Hey everybody, this is Billy at Baker Show Tough, and man, do we have something cool for you guys today. We are here with Scotty Graham, and I told you guys earlier we had something cool for you Star Wars fans. And man, here, you're in Bakersfield, right? We're here in Bakersfield, and look at this. Scotty here himself actually designs a lot of these costumes, these Star Wars, right? I mean, a lot of the stormtroopers and all that stuff, and let's get into it, man. So how long have you been doing this? Um, I started actually making the the things in 2009. Okay. And this, so how did you get, like, how do you get the molds or how does this, I mean, how does it start? Like I look over here and I'd imagine these are the molds, right? Am I wrong here? Or, yeah, that's what they, these... that, this is what they call forming box. Okay. So let's say this is my trooper face plate. Okay. This is my forming box. Okay. And is it like a, that's kind a, of like a clay or something? That's or? a, that's a marine oh. grade resin. Okay. And uh, and see all the little holes in him. Yep. That's so you can get all the air to escape and get a nice. So a you put a vacuum on it to kind uh -huh. of suck it down onto it. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And so this actually was cast from a screen used helmet. Oh okay. There there's still a few around in the world. So what are they kind of rare? The original screen helmets. Yeah. What uh, what happened was in the in 1976 when they actually went and made Star Wars. They didn't know it was going to be this big hit because science fiction had just been beat to the ground. That's kind right. of why they went to England to do it. So they threw everything away. Yeah. The movie came out and the guys at Shepard and were throwing stuff out to make the next movie, whatever that right. was. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. a lot of it got lost. So the only thing left in the world is uh, in museums. There's a few things in an archive. And uh, some guys recently, their uncle was in the filming in Tunisia where they did the roadblock scene in Star Wars. Yeah. He brought his home. So they copied it. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Oh, okay. So. And so, like, can we start over here and kind of just show us some of the stuff? Now, here, this is a snow. I would imagine this is like the snow stormtroopers, right? right? Uh, Empire. Right. 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 And that's where that's where it made its debut, right? Mm hmm. Of course, kind of cool. It's got like a vinyl here and or a little bit of something. That's neat. Yeah, that's our new guy. We're not really finished with this yet. So this is like, I call this the V one and a half helmet. V one and a half. Now are you doing the whole gear or just the helmet? Oh yeah, the whole thing. So you're doing thing. the whole thing? Yeah, so I can show you a few snow trooper parts. Okay. Here's the, uh, this is the belt buckle deal. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, you got your little, one of your hands here, boom. Ooh, that's neat. And then this is the field pack. Yeah. So. Now, do you, yeah, it's cool that you act, do you actually have to know what everything is. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, we spend hours, hours, hours of research looking at Blu-ray and pictures, and yeah. you blow, you know what, how big, how wide a belt is. Yeah, you wind it up on your screen and, until you got the right measurement, and then you measure some other part, and you know, yeah. okay, I can. So you get them pretty close to actually what they are yeah. on the screen. You actually said that you design this for a group, right? What what group is right. that? The 501st Legion. 501st Legion, okay, and they do like costume or? Uh, 501st Legion is a is the uh, premier Star Wars costuming club in the world. Okay. We're worldwide, there, there's nowhere in the world you can go and not bump into one, they're everywhere. Okay, so when I go, if you go to an event and you see someone dressed up like a stormtrooper, is there a good possibility that you had something to do with that? Maybe. Well, they're probably a Legionnaire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it just, it depends. There's a few guys doing trooper armor nowadays. Yeah, yeah. Um, I see a lot of parodies on YouTube. Like, if, you know, they had the cops thing where they, right. they look like stormtroopers and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so there's actually a lot. It's kind of a cool costume, actually. You know, it's probably one of the cooler costumes out of Star Wars. Yeah. So, okay, let's go over here. I see something pretty cool. I think this is a... Now this is off the, if I'm right, this is off the Empire, right? Off the, uh, this is a ad -AT driver. Is that wrong or is that yes, close? Yes, yes. ad -AT driver. Um... And what this is, I, I can tell you the story again now. Okay. Uh, when they did Star Wars in 76, uh, there were 14 TIE fighter pilots made at okay. the studios. The guys kept two of them. I guess they thought they looked cool and they kept two. So 12 went into filming production. Uh, later, when they were doing Empire, they took two of the TIE pilots and they, they reworked them and turned them into the ADAT driver. So all, everything's different on him. Like this is his chest armor. Yeah, that's cool, and man. And his chest box. And it's the same as a TIE fighter guy, except for they have different greeblies. They call these greeblies the little parts. Right. And decals and paint. Um, and then the other thing is 
they weren't white. They were actually a light gray. So this is not that match. Did it match the like ad at armor or something, or the clothes, or because they're like gray too, right? Yeah, they're all super light gray. They weren't white, so mm. people paint them white, but that's not that's not the true color. No. Wow. Uh -huh. Man, that's awesome. And then here we've got, that's pretty cool. Yeah, this is what's known as the set for stun helmet. And <laughs> this awesome. is an exact replica, and this is what they do. They name the, the, the helmets for these stormtroopers from what scene they're in. Okay. So this, if you slowed it down on Blu-ray, now originally these helmets were made of a snot-colored uh, uh, polyethylene. Okay. And so the paint never stuck to them, so they're all chipped up. And the guys kept trying to paint them all the time, so they had runs in them. Right. And so, and so that's what we did here is I painted the dude with the snot color. Huh. And then I use latex and paint white over. And then when you peel the latex out, you get true chips. You can feel it. it feels so like is it, it, like in the movie, did it have the chip? Like, or, oh, yeah. So it did, right? They were like, they weren't perfect, right? They were no, like, so it no. looked like they were used and stuff. They were actually part of like a military oh, yeah. style. Wow, that's a lot of effort right there. That's cool. I got it. Okay, here's a question I got for you. All right. Is that in the movie they have a voice that sounds like they're talking to a tin can? Mm -hmm. How do they do that? Do you not have any idea? Um, well, I can tell you what we do. Okay, it's um, good enough for me. All right, listen. Okay, there's there's a whole bunch of different products out on the market, and the guys are always working on this stuff. But uh, the uh, the easiest way to do it is you get a twenty dollar. Uh, Radio Shack voice amp for like people on a tour bus, they wear it on their okay. head. Okay, yeah, you know? yeah. You pull the little wind thing off the microphone, get rid of that. Okay. You know, and then you, and then when you put it in your helmet and you got all your stuff on, you turn it up just right and it sounds like you're in a tin can. Oh, really? Yeah. So they can, so when they can actually talk like that in real life, I mean, you can actually, it sounds, oh, yeah. Like, no kidding. Yeah. Wow. And then they make this thing called a sonic burst static burst and it actually uh, somehow it's voice activated and it, and it only when you talk into it it'll get real fuzzy and then it'll click on and off yeah so am i would i is it a reach to say that uh you're a big star wars fan is well yeah that, huh what's your favorite star wars empire yeah it is it is right mm -hmm. would you say most true true star wars fans empire is probably like one of the best ones yeah what'd you think of the new series now is that love hate? A lot of the old schoolers don't like the new series. The oh, you mean the the yeah the, the newer one, two, yeah three yeah. Did it ruin it? Were you upset? Well, how about when you changed? <laughs> I, were you upset when George Lucas changed? Are you one of the people that upset when he changed the movies? Uh, or do you carry it away? You know, I thought that was cool actually. Uh, that was when I took my boys. They were young, and I took them to the show to see it for their first time. Right. And I thought it was okay. I'm a diehard, and I have to look at the the old version to do my thing. Right? So. Yeah, yeah. So you still you look at the original versions when you do your stuff? Yeah, because there's a lot of busts. If you know what you're looking at, like uh, they put Jedi stormtroopers in the desert uh, okay. with dirt on them, and there's a big difference between a, a episode four and five trooper and a episode six trooper. Really? Because the like I was telling you, the originals got trashed. Right. And so ILM here in in California made the Jedi Troopers, and they're nothing like the originals. So the, the sand ones had like the orange, or didn't they have the orange fluorescent uh, like flap or something on yeah, them? Yeah, the pauldron. Yeah, yeah. You want to know what that was? What is that? That was a, a, B or a motocross chest protector. <laughs> That's awesome. And what they did is they just took it apart. And they added some foam padding in it and restitched it up with a different color on the field. Oh, cool. Came out good, though. It looked cool. Yeah. Now, down here, of course, let me take it out. Do you do these two, or is this what that, am I? That was just me and my friend goofing off. Man. This is Vader's. Oh, no. All the Vader's were made of fiberglass, but we took one and tried to yank plastic over it. Oh, man. So that was just us screwing around, but. Yeah. I mean. Is it hard? Is it harder to do a Vader mask than it's like a, a storm? I don't know. I've never really got into that. You're just more of a stormtrooper, right? I mean, that's yeah. your. You that's kind of like your special. Yeah. Can we look up there? Now we got one more thing up here that I thought was pretty cool. Okay. Okay. Look here's your. So is this like these are all your molds right here? This is the bucket box. The bucket box. What does that mean? Uh, this is when I'm making uh, trooper lids. I'll throw everything in this box. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> And then uh, what I do is uh, I come back and somebody says, hey, Scotty, I need a 
helmet, you know, can you make me this guy? And they always name him after the scene, the stop that ship guy or <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah. Okay, it's sure. So cool. You know? Oh, I love it. It's so good. Yeah. It's very cool. And this faceplate, this is actually an Empire Strikes Back Mark One helmet. So. What's the bit like? Is that in the Cloud City or is that, is that uh, that's a pilot? It was in the background of Cloud City. Okay. Stormtrooper. All right. And it was in Jedi. Yeah. Okay. So is there? So were they changing the Stormtroopers through like Star Wars through Jedi? They were changing the looks of them a little bit. Oh yeah. Wow. Let's take a look at these decals real quick. Okay. And I'll just give you a, head, a real quick like rundown on how they changed them. Okay. So say and they weren't decals in Star Wars in Episode Four, but uh, we make them. It's easier to do. Yeah. So so you would have had. Gray field with a pinstripe, mm -hmm. some black lines, and you would have had your tube stripes. These are actually blue in there, wow. dark blue, like yeah. on the helmet. Uh, that was all painted. But then when you got, and you, the sand troopers had the same, but no uh, black vents. Right. They were just raw field. But then when you got into the... Uh, are you still like researching though? I mean, do you still find yourself going back when someone wants something to make it, you know, or do you pretty much have it all figured out by now? Oh no, that's the fun I have with it is, uh, is doing all the research and trying to make mine look just like the movie. Right. I mean, it wouldn't be any fun. I'd do something else. Right. Here's a here's an Empire Strikes Back. So they were a lot different. Yeah. And what actually an Empire, it was black tape with duct tape over it. Hmm. And the slits were cut in with a, an X-Acto knife and then these were decaled all wow. the way. Yeah, totally interesting. Okay, so I'm looking up here. Now this, these are kind of neat. Now this thing, this is a, a, is that like a, it's a bomber, right? A TIE fighter bomber? TIE fighter. And Star Wars the original, or no? Uh-huh. It was, right? And the mm -hmm. last scene when they have Darth Vader and the two TIE bombers with him or whatever, is that wrong? Or no? No, that's right. Is that right? Okay, yeah. yeah. Very cool, man. So, and let me, you want to hear a little history lesson? Yeah, okay. we love it. Okay. Now, here's one I, I've kind of messed around making a Martian out of this guy. He's going to be glow in the dark and all <laughs> that, and eyeballs. Okay. Anyway, but the thing about this is, this was a Navy pilot helmet, U.S. Navy pilot helmet. Okay. And they put a Mohawk strip on it and then chopped it in half. These ears were actually separate. I built mine into the lid, it's easier to make, but they were separate pieces. Yeah. And then Lucas didn't want this in his helmet. He wanted the, a different face yeah. for the guys, but it was faster and easier for, for the prop guys to just widen this, make this funny mohawk, and throw the stormtrooper face. Yeah, in. yeah, yeah. So they pulled these in ABS, because later in the movie they started using ABS for stuff. Okay. His machine was like mine, it was, it was old fashioned, and so his ABS pulls, they weren't super sharp, and you ended up with what they call a hero faceplate, which is only six teeth, three hmm. on either side. Yeah. Because it didn't draw down now on that right. acrylic. Right. Um, anyway, and that's the same thing as like Luke and Han Solo's helmets they wore. Yeah. Those were, those were ABS. Okay. Everyone else was. Uh, Polyethylene. And is that what that's what you're what are you you're working with? Uh... I do ABS and I do styrene. The thing I like about styrene is you can get it like that's not a really good one, but because those were when I seasoned my box. But mm -hmm. uh, see, that's that's 60 gauge. It's pretty pretty hardcore, right? It, yeah, and I can go up to 90. I can pull this in 90, and it'd be like you could go out Ooh. and play baseball with it. <laughs> Wow. So when you put this whole costume on, is it like, are you piecing it together piece by piece? Like, do you put on, I would imagine some kind of, what kind of under, like a black uh, nylon or whatever it is, right? Yeah. Underneath. Yeah. And then you individually put the pieces on or do they, is it all strapped to that thing? How does that usually work? So, uh, you were asking me about putting, yeah. putting your armor on. Yeah, so let's see it. So this is the, this would be the armor right here. Yeah. So this is my whole upper body. And see there's my little voice amp in there. Okay, oh, so that's the thing that makes the sound, right? Mm -hmm. huh. And uh, they did have this little piece of material sewn over that wow. in the movie. And basically, it's like putting on a shirt, this part. Yeah. You slip it on like a shirt. Okay, so that's not so hard to put on. No, it ain't bad. Uh, and then your, uh, 
like let's say you're uh, you bought one in here. Yeah. That one's sort of like a bucket. Yeah, it's like a trash can. Barrel, <laughs> yeah. Okay, now we're looking and at then, uh, the gun part, right? And this is was this a is this was actually a replica of the movie we're here, or is that yes, what we're talking about? Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, very cool actually. So this was made for, for, by some guys at Sun Valley Props. They uh, they did the guns for Men in Black. Okay. And they call themselves Sci Fire. Yeah. Uh, and what this is is the base of it is a German MG34. Right. Now what they did for Star Wars is they put a box over the magazine, mm -hmm. over the feed there. Yep. They put a disc on there, and they put some BMW windshield wipers on the barrel. And with, no way! And they wired them is that down. what that is? That's what that was. Yeah. Oh wow! It looks cool. Yeah. So how much of the is is it? Is there some of the movie? I've heard that some of the even the stormtroopers is it modeled after German stuff, like old German stuff? Mm -hmm. Or no, am I wrong? Like old no. stormtrooper, like their old snow guys and stuff. So it is, and it's modeled yeah. after some of the German stuff the, from, with, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. They, totally. they did that. Oh, yeah, here we go. To make them look more like just like bad guy looking. Um, this is your E11. Yeah. Okay. This Standard is, edition for Stormtrooper. Yeah. And this one actually is, is uh, I'm working on it. It's going to be an Empire version. So it's missing some of the parts, but I'll show you the, the, the New Hope one pretty quick. Okay. Um, what we also have the SE14. Yeah. <laughs> now that was actually was that using the movie too? I mean that model. That was using promo photos. Okay. Very cool. Um, that was made by SciFire, and then I have this DL44. Yeah. And what they did is they glued little little model. Now who would use that? Han Solo. Or yeah, that... Han and Luke. And that's all little Dodge Hemi model parts glued, oh, wow. glued on that. And thing. they did that in the movie too. Yeah, that's what they did. Wow. And this is a this was a tank azimuth scope. They mounted ever on everything backwards. Yeah, very cool, man. Is that funny? That's totally cool. And this is your little holdout blaster from Jedi. Oh, nice. Mhm. Mm yeah. Wow, it's kind of cool. Like when you see like actually how they made them and you know and what they're influenced by. Yeah. Really cool. well, well, how much does it something like this, yeah. like like if someone in the is it the Legion, like if someone wanted to buy something like this, I would imagine this isn't a cheap gig, right? There's a lot of work that goes into this, right? No, oh, yeah, you you're looking at uh, if say you even built your own kit. Yeah. You're gonna spend eleven to twelve hundred bucks. Wow, and that's building your own. Doing your own. Wow. So, no matter how you slice it, if you want one that's complete, or if you do it yourself, you're gonna end up spending that money. Wow. Now, do you sell to the general public, like if someone really wanted one, or is it you kind of like is it strictly to the legion? Um, like, well, if if somebody was like, hey, you know, I might go in the bucket box and take out something that I would not normally sell to a trooper. Right. You know, yeah, like yeah. if they wanted to display like this guy here, yeah, I might do something like that. Yeah. But I, typically, I don't. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. I love it. Well, so this is very cool, man. I love it. I can sit here all day. We could talk Star Wars, man. I can't get enough, but uh, awesome. And I, well, so when the new movies come out, are you going to be building anything for those, you think? Or it depends? You know? Oh, yeah. I've, I've, I work with people all around the world on this, and I, there's people already talking about, yeah, we're saving our money to make this and do that. So <laughs> That's very cool. Very cool. All right. Well, hey, I want to thank uh, thank you for showing us this, man. This is very neat, and I bet a lot of people who didn't even know that you were here, you know, and it's in Bakersfield this is going on. It's really neat, man. Yep. I love it. All right. This is Billy. This is Scotty. And this is Bakersfield Tech.